Hi everyone, welcome back to the Bison video blog. Our summer series continues as we focus on player number three on our breakthrough guys to watch for 2017. We're back on the defensive side of the football. Guy out of South Dakota, his older brother is a starting defensive end in Jared Tuska. But Bison coach has been talking this guy up for a long time to you and me, Jeff. And that's his younger brother and Derek Tuska. He comes in at number three, another sophomore. He's part of our guy's third straight sophomore on our list here. He's got freak size. I think he's pretty quick, too. Watching him as I did during spring ball, I think there's an opportunity. You're going to see a heck of a lot more of number 91 on the football field. I'm guessing people are going, no, what in God's name do you have a guy who had four tackles last year <laughs> being one of your breakthrough yeah. guys, one of your top five I'm breakthrough one of those people. guys? You are one of those guys, too. <laughs> Two of those were tackles for loss. They one were. was a quarterback sack. Shows he has some big-time ability. I just like the guy's size. And sometimes when you come from a nine-man football program, you may take one or two years to really get adjusted to the whole game. This is his third year yep. now, correct? This is his third year in the program. And this is the year, like we said with Zach Johnson, this is the year when you really take that baby fat of the first two years of coming <laughs> from nine-man and really turn it into something special. And I think this guy has the ability. The problem is it's such a deep position. I was about to say his, his, his road to the field is blocked in my mind. Well, you got Stanley Jones. Yeah. You know, you got real, I thought Greg Menard. Uh, you got, uh, Jones had an awesome second half of 2016. I really believe that. He had almost too much experience to be a breakthrough guy. <laughs> yes, so we had I to, agree. I think we had to get, you know, shed <laughs> him Stan's off. not on that list, correct. He's ineligible. Yes. He's ineligible for the list. I just like the Tusky kid. I like his older brother, but apparently you know, we always heard through the years that his younger his brother younger was just a tad good. quicker yeah. and pretty good. And he's just as athletic, if not more. I just, it, it, to me, it, it's more of a, maybe it's a reach, but we look at him and we hear comments and go, yeah. you need to be making those kind of plays. And you look at it for his older brother, who also I thought had a, had a breakthrough season last year. Jared got out there, he disrupted plays, he broke up passes, had a few sacks as well. Jared right now is slated to start on one side of the defensive end. Of course, you've got Greg Menard at the other. And you've always told me, if you want to be good at this level of football, you better be really good up front. And I think the Bison defensive line with Nate Tangway back, they're going to be pretty good in 2017. Plus, there's two chances here for him to reach the field. Caleb Butler may see more time inside. Could. And they're moving Cole Karch inside. So there's two <laughs> defensive ends who would have given him challenges in playing. Time. Correct. That the road to the, yeah, you're right. The opening's he, there. His, his road, it got a little bit open there. Uh, you're right with Karch and also with Butler getting moved. Uh, you look at this kid, though, and he had a dominant high school career. I know it's nine-man ball, and everyone that's going to be watching, it's nine-man football in South Dakota. But NDSU's done pretty well out of that state, especially even at the nine-man level in North Dakota, where they've gotten some guys that have excelled. And it takes a while. It does. You've written articles about that. We've done TV stories on it. It's not year one. It's not year two. Landon Leckler said it. It was probably by his third year that things were starting to snag. And it's no coincidence. Place. A lot of these, most of these guys on the list are yeah. guys going in their third year. And that's really the make or take. Are you going to be the key contributor or are you just sort of going to plateau out? I think this kid has the ability and the athletic uh, wherewithal mm. to really make a difference. Another guy that I think during fall, you're going to have to be a busy guy during fall camp to watch uh, during that month because it's interesting. You know, you know what they have in Menard. I think they know what they have in the older Tuska. But this guy, along with the younger Volson, the two younger sets of brothers, which I've heard of these two, might be the better set. They really like what they have in Tanner, and they like what they have in Jared. But between Cordell Volson and this guy in Derek Tuska, man, they could. They might be set up for for a few years to come. Well, when the Bison were really good during those five title years, I thought they rotated defensive linemen and Absolutely defensive right. ends just at a regular pace. When Kyle Emanuel wasn't starting in 2013, you knew you had something. Yeah, when you have a third-round draft choice yeah. not starting. <laughs> you're doing and, it. It, and it benefited him. It benefited him over Absolutely. the long run. If at all possible, you're going to see them try to do their best to really rotate guys. Greg Menard cannot be on the field 90% of the time. The key thing is getting guys in and off the field. You know how fast some offenses go. Eastern Washington comes right to yeah. mind. That sometimes you can't get personnel off. I'm curious if well, that's, that's a challenge to get these guys on the field. You're you know right, the, You though. know the best way to do that? Stop him on stop three downs. Him. I was about to say, stop him, get him off the field. Derek Tuska, number three on our breakthrough guys to watch for 2017.